what do we have? We have our source code. You instrument your source code. You have a binary. You run this binary. This binary will be measured. You have a summary report of it. And then it will have our GUI tool called Q that shows you what is the problem, where in your code, and in which process in, in, in the execution. With that, you reiterate, you optimize your, your, your measurements, and then you run a full trace of this thing to know all the problems of your, of your code. As I mentioned before, and as I showed the picture, we are not alone. There are several other tools. Uh, the tools are different, but they have the same needs. I mean, uh, we need to measure, we need to instrument, we need to do a lot of things that come up. And this created a problem in our community, which was uh, that we had a lot of people doing the same thing, essentially. Uh, and this is duplicated effort. So duplicated effort is something that we don't like. No one likes. And another problem is that if you have all those measurements and all those different tools, you end up with a lot of measuring your code with different tools just because this tool might give me one insight, this other tool might give me something else. Uh, this is of course complicated. This is of complicated for the sysadmin, this is complicated for the user. So what happens? For example, this is the, it was the state two years ago of some performance tools. You have Paraver, you have Vampire, you have Scalaska, you have Tau, and then you have converters between those tools, you have instrumenters of those uh, the, the, those codes. So, this was very confusing for us. So, what we did, we called the Romulans, and created something called Scorpi. Scorpi is essentially, actually we have the original developer of something here, uh, thanks for coming. Um, it's a community common project where we took all this common infrastructure of all those two, what we need, which is common for all of them, and are developing this together. Uh, so we share. We share the instrumentation system, we share the measurement system, we share the trace formats, the report formats, and so this, uh, the idea is to, to unify uh, effort, and so every group can build their own unique tools on top of it. Uh, so who uses that right now? Uh, we do, in Yiddish, in Germany. Uh, people from Dresden use it. Uh, people from Munich use it. And the people from the United States, from Oregon. So again, what happened? Uh, we had this mess, and we came up. Uh, what we have now is an instrumental module, a sim single trace format, and you just need one converter tool, and we have profiles and GUI. So, what we measure? As I mentioned at the beginning, we measure MPI, OpenMP, and your own user functions. We can create MPI profiles, this is very simple, you just link uh, your code against uh, our library, and this run is really fast, it doesn't disturb your execution that much. Uh, this shows how many times a function was called, how much data was uh, spent, how much time each function, it's like a profiler, but parallel. Uh, we can also create a callback profile, which means you, you, you can actually um, see who called who and when. This needs recompilation because we have to instrument the, the function calls. And this needs, it creates, of course, some overhead. And so after running this, you can might need to filter and just uh, instrument some functions that you actually want to know about, especially in C++, for example. Um, and then we have trace. Trace is when you can actually record every single event on your code. And then this can show you an efficiency pattern, sorry. Um, but this, of course, this is heavy. This is heavy on data, and this is heavy on time. So this is important to filter. Uh, our two, it's parallel in the data collection, reduction. The analysis is parallel. It goes, it imitates your code. So if your code uses a million cores, our two will use a million cores. 
we have everything parallel, well, except the visualization, but it's scalable. Uh, so what we measure, this is an example, those are classic examples of MPI patterns. Uh, the first one is the late sender, when a process took too long to send uh, a message, and the other process are already waiting. So this delay, this, this waiting time is measured. You have late receiver, which is the opposite. You have wrong order, and you have barrier uh, <coughs> operations. And all those uh, red errors, arrows, are, are delayed. So for example, uh, this, is, this is how our tool shows a late sender. It shows the problem, where in your code, and where in the machine which is running. In this case, a blue gene P. Uh, this is another way of viewing the thing, uh, creating a topology of your application that maps, uh, maps your functions. So for example, this code is a code for measuring sea ice. Um, as you can see, there is a lot of uh, weights in the middle, close to the coast, because, well, there is no ice in those places. Um, what else? We measure uh, direct wait time, means when you have uh, someone sending a message and this wait of the other process spends, uh, this time this other process spends on waiting, we, we can measure that. We can measure indirect weights. So for example, what does it look like? Again, it's a matter of going to the GUI, seeing what we have as direct wait time. In this case of the example of sea ice, is a code from another research uh, in UD. Uh, you see that uh, direct wait in time, you have a lot around Antarctic and Arctic regions, and on the coast, and you have little to no time on sea. Um, but the other hand, as you're not measuring any sea ice on the tropical part, you have a lot of indirect waiting time. Uh, what else? This is a, this was a very interesting research a couple years ago. Uh, our tool is the only tool right now, as far as I'm aware of, uh, that shows you where a delay was created. So if you have a delay in your code, uh, might happen that this delay cascades and you have diff a further delay. So our tool shows you where it started. So for example, in process A, in the beginning, you have a delay, and this delay everything. This we have, uh, our, uh, our tool shows. Uh, besides that, we have, for example, uh, one of the machines we use a lot is a Blue Gene Q. Blue Gene Q has a network of, uh, it's a 60 torus network. Uh, it's hard to visualize six dimensions, so what we do is that we fold those dimensions and we can still have some insights out of it. You can move them, you can select different uh, ways of seeing them. And this is, this is very interesting because, for example, the K supercomputer in Japan has also a 6D uh, network. Uh, what else? Well, so where are we heading now? Um, energy, because my boss is getting tired of paying our electricity account, which is around 10,000 euros an hour. Um, so we have to produce code that is aware of energy. Uh, another thing is to bring performance analysis of parallel applications to the community. So what does it mean? Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have no... Uh, the open source world is starting to need that. You have to program parallel right away. So that's that's why we are here. Seriously, we are here for, for that. Uh, and well, essentially that's it. Uh, any questions, we have a mailing list. There is a lot of very smart people uh, wishing to answer your questions. And this is our website. Uh, actually, that's it. Any questions? Yes, there is some initial support for CUDA already. We can measure CUDA events. 
but it's something that is already happening. You can you can get to the events and function called for 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 this dispatch. Also, we have already uh, some initial support for the Xeon Five, which is also an accelerator. Yes. Scalaska, there was support for CO5, but in score P, uh, that is completely, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. We, we are working on this. What's the timeline on this? Mm, it's ready when it's ready. Oh. <laughs> I, I also have a, a question. Sure. Um, so that you mentioned there are different performance tools out there, and now some of them are sharing a common base. Not yes. Not everything yet. Yes. Do you, do you still think it makes sense to have all these kinds of different performance tools that are each of them a little bit better in maybe some aspects? Actually, yes, because uh, there is no single answer. Uh, you might... Uh, there are different... Because performance analysis in itself is today is more an art than a science, and so you have different, uh, different things that you measure. So, for example, OR2 gives you a very straight answer to those things. But if you want a more detailed thing, you might use a different tool. Or if you want different granularity, all those things are different. So yes, there are different uh, goals. So does it basically go from very user-friendly and not, not that much detail to very, very specific? Detailed. Exactly. So if, if you try to do everything in one single tool, you have such a monster that, well, yes. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.